Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back for the final session of Monday's edition of our virtual conference. It's been a busy day for us. We've since this morning we've gained ten new attendees. We've added many new customers to our ACE list and our newsletter. And we had a great session from a customer at Tri County Technical College. I'll be sure to get an updated participant list on our website after this session. Because I am seeing folks in this session that haven't been with us today, I want to remind you that you can get the handouts and PowerPoint slides from our site at aceware.com and virtual conference. Just click on the session and you will see the ability to register, but then you'll also see PowerPoints or um, outlines for that. So be sure to en enjoy that. You can print them now, you can print them later, whatever works best for you. And I'll remind you that the sessions are being recorded. A lot of information being shared, so it's good to have the recordings to return to later. This afternoon, we'll be drawing for an Amazon gift card. This morning, we have some sweet treats from the um, Savannah Sweet Shop. This afternoon, we sent a book, and, this, and late this afternoon, we're going to send an Amazon gift card. So today, we have Jason and Spine with us to share everything that will be new with, the, with AceWeb in the June release. There's been a lot of new information, and there's still some polishing and testing to be done. And so that will come out later this month. And um, so, Jason, gosh, I need to just turn this over to you to tell us what we will be seeing in AceWeb later this month. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Jason, and I'm going to go off camera. Sounds good. All right, here you go. Okay, let's show my screen here. Tell me when you're... you're I'm seeing it. your screen. Okay, great. <clears throat> so as Sharon said, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that we've had Stein and now even Matthew working on in AceWeb. So these are some of the, the bigger features that we've added. It's not the complete list, and we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. These are some of the big things, some of the cool things that uh, you guys are going to look forward to in this June conference release. So let's jump right in. First up, we have a slight enhancement to the AceWeb Storm module. So Storm is the AceWeb student online reporting module that uh, allows students to print transcripts and um, and certificates for their classes. We've added a new ability that has been asked for for quite a while that allows a student to print or reprint a receipt for their registration. So this will work just like the store module. It's gonna function the exact same way. Uh, if we take a quick look at a preview screen here, you can see that this is a receipt that was designed in Student Manager's Report Writer, and the student can now print this off or download a PDF right from the web. So they would go into their um, registration history. In fact, for the new people here that don't know what AceWeb Storm is, let's take a look. So if I'm logged in and I go to my history page from my My Account page, you can see we've got some options here such as My Certificates and My Transcript. If I click My Certificates, I'm now presented with a list of the certificates, or rather the registrations that staff have enabled in Student Manager to be eligible for a student to print a certificate of. And so when you click that Get My Certificate button, it simply uses whichever certificate report you've designed and assigned for use with ACE Web Storm and allows that student to print that out or download it. So it's a, a very, very cool feature that went in um, it's been in for a while now, but if you haven't known about this or if you're just learning about this, this is a really awesome feature. So the other half of that is it allows them to do the same thing with a transcript. So this one obviously is just the entire list of the courses that they have uh, registered for. Now you do have the ability to customize this um, if there's certain types of courses that you don't want showing on transcripts like membership courses or donation courses, things like that, then you simply don't enable those for use with the transcript and it just shows the ones that um, 
that do qualify for that. So it's a very, very cool feature. Uh, but the, the newest addition to that, again, is the ability for students to print a receipt or reprint a receipt right from their history page. So it would be under like this payment status button and they would click the button and get the, the receipt that again, they can download or print out. We are going to offer a kind of a, just a starter re receipt report that you can import in that is um, completely vetted and, and all the functions in it definitely work on ACEweb. Cause again, um, the ability to display the reports through Storm on ACEweb is not the full functioning report writer one. So there are some functions and things in Student Manager that will not work on ACEweb or they would have to be slightly modified. So we'll make sure that we can get you one that works out of the box and gives you kind of a starting point to go to. The other thing I want to mention about ACEweb Storm is that it now checks in your archives. So if you've got um, registrations in your database archive and your archiving courses when they run that transcript um, or want to print those certificates it's actually looking through all of those courses now so that's really awesome. Next up we have the course publish date feature. So what this is in a nutshell is it allows you to specify a date where you want an ACEweb published property to go live and the way it works simply is that there is a new date field on the ACEweb Info tab of your course. You enter in a date there and you select whichever ACEweb published property you want to be the, the changeover. So, you know, um, it's, it's basically not going to be published. And then once this target date is reached, it's going to change it to either publish register or whichever option that you select. So for those of you that really like to micromanage, you know, down to the day when courses are starting to show up on ACEweb, this is an awesome option rather than I've seen some people have, you know, separate calendar reminders that say, okay, on this date, you need to change this course and this course and this course to be uh, this published property. This allows you to just set that up ahead of time and completely forget about it. So uh, that's another one that, that we're all really excited about. Next up is early bird optional fees and coupons. So we've had the early bird system in since since the very get-go, but we've never offered it for additional or optional fees. That is now a thing of the past because as you can see here, we've got a fee expires column on our other fees or our additional fee se section that allows you to put in the date that that fee uh, is no longer available for them to choose. So we've got our, our um, cheaply priced textbook there and then the discounted pre-order option only available until June 10th. So. Uh, another cool feature that I think you guys will really enjoy. Next, we're going to talk about some enhancements that we've made to the administration page. Now, these are mainly for the ACE web or the ACEWare staff. Uh, these kind of benefit us the most. It makes our job a little bit easier helping you um, troubleshooting problems and things. One of the big ones is that we've enhanced the security for your ACEWeb admin page. Um, if you're not familiar with the admin page, it can be kind of risky if uh, someone that shouldn't be messing with that just has complete open access to it, such as just putting in, you know, the, the admin page link and hitting enter. I could get them to that admin page and give them the opportunity to start trying out passwords and things. And you definitely don't want that. So with these latest versions of AceWeb, it's basically going to check and see if your web server is allowing anonymous access to that page. And if it is, it just completely prevents it from displaying altogether. Now, if you're actually on the server itself and launching a browser and going to the admin page, it detects that and says, okay, obviously you have access to the server, so I'm not going to you know, hide the web page. Um, but it's kind of a, a big relief for us because by default, when you install AceWeb, in order to properly secure it, you have to have IT manually set those file permissions on those admin pages to correctly prevent unauthorized access. And we know that that can be kind of tricky to work with IT, get on their schedule, and then you know give them the specific instructions to do this. Now it's it's just uh, secured by default out of the box. So now these next two, which is uh, the... Jason. Yes. Uh, I should mention that that 
uh, security um, piece you just mentioned applies to the page that's called admin ASP or AWP, you know, ASPX, ASPX. admin ASPX. And uh, that has the most critical server level kind of access to it. That's the one that, that won't, isn't allowed if you have anonymous access. The AceWeb admin page uh, still, if you don't apply server level permissions to it, it will still come up. But all of these links on here will then require a password when you, uh, you know, that you enter another password when you click on them. So, uh, yep, so it. this one does not have that extra level of uh, security built in, but the more critical page does. And so just keep that straight. Yep. This, and this basically what Stein is saying is uh, this is the admin page, which has things such as restart IIS or reboot machine, which are, are not links that you want available to the, uh, to the general public. So this is definitely the one that you absolutely must have under lock and key, which is basically preventing um, unauthorized access or anonymous access to that. But as Stein said, the ASWeb administration page, if you do want to apply that level of security, you do still need to have IT modify those file permissions, remove anonymous access so that you are prompted for that Windows login. Um, but again, you're not um, you're not providing the options to to restart the machine and and do those more malicious things with the ASWeb administration page functions. So. Okay, so speaking of ASWeb administration page things, one of the links on the ASWeb admin page is the AW Viewer tool. Um, again, this is mainly for text, but we've we've tweaked it a little bit so that it's a little bit more friendly to use. This is kind of a, a sample view of using AW Viewer and using the directory option. So to give you an example, if I go to the AW Viewer page, I log in here, and I were to put in DIR, or colon DIR, you can see that we're getting a, a directory listing of where at whatever starting point I chose, which happens to be the ACE folder, the templates folder. So at the changes that we've made are you can now actually click on the folders to navigate down into them. We've also added this view column so that if you want to view the uh, contents of a file, you can just simply click that contents link. And you can also toggle between viewing the um, the file as it's rendered on AceWeb or viewing the actual source of it. Now, I should mention that this is not an edit, this is a view only. So this isn't meant to replace Template Manager or anything like that. This is simply a quick kind of at a glance view and is really helpful if, um, for instance, if you're building out Express Ridge pages or something like that and you kind of want to see how AceWeb is going to render some stuff, um, it's still not going to do the AceWeb um, uh, kind of integrated coding. It's not going to render those out, but all the HTML will co come out. Like if you're doing field sets, things like that, um, it will render those so that you can kind of get a better, better at a glance view. The other thing, let's go back, is that you can now actually go back one more. Actually, I have a slide of this, so you can click on this permissions link, either on a file or a folder, and it's now going to display the accounts on the web server and what permissions or permission levels they have set. So again, this is a very handy tool for us for determining you know, when something isn't working right and the error messages are either not there or not very helpful. Checking permissions is one of those things that, that typically we're gonna do right off the bat to, to try and get to the bottom of it. So. Very handy tools for not just us, but for you as well. Okay, coming up next, we have some enhancements to the Manager Web Instructor view access. I don't know what exactly to call that feature, but we've made it so that you can now search for classes by a particular instructor or for all instructors. Previously, it was all of the instructors 
and they would all display as soon as you clicked on the look up by instructors link. Um, if you're not familiar with what Manager Web is, let's take a quick review of that. Uh, let's see, here we go, Staff Web Access. So if we go to, let's start from the administration page. So, so from our ACE Web administration page, if you are already logged in as a staff member, you can either log in here or once you click on a link, it's gonna prompt you for your staff login. And by staff login, I mean your student manager login. If you have manager web enabled, you will be presented with these awesome options. So with manager web, you'll be able to look up a student. Uh, so let's, for example, go to the look up student option. You can see we've got a name search here. So it is last name first, and so it does function on partial matches. So if I didn't know how to spell that, uh, that one guy that works here, uh, what's his name, have, have something. I know um, it's Chuck. We can do partial matches and you can see that it does pull up Charles Havlicek. So from here, we can click this little door link and that's going to log on as that student. Now you're still logged on as a staff member. You can see up here at the top, this is the staff member that you're logged on as, and then this is the student that you're logged on as. So once we log on as that student, it opens up this new set of options on this side. From here, we have a number of things that we can do. We can enroll them in a course. If we choose this option, it's going to be just like the student, or what, what the student would see when they're picking out courses and things. So it's still using the same framework that your students use when they're picking out courses, adding them to their cart, so on and so forth. So it's a great way to walk through, like if you do phone support and you're walking a student through how to pick out their classes, you can kind of see exactly what they're seeing by using this method. If you have the quick pick module, you can do the actual uh, quick pick routine, pick out their courses there and uh, proceed to the checkout. You can edit their name record. So if you're logged into that student and you click this edit name record, you're basically gonna be taken to their uh, person.awp page where you can modify um, any of these options that you have enabled. Now, if you wanted to have a, or get back to your manager web page, the, when you're logged on as a staff, this icon up here is a shortcut uh, that goes back to the manager web homepage. So you can just use that to get quickly back there. Viewing registration history. Again, if you're walking through this with someone, um, you can show them how they can go to their history page and then do all those same functions that they would be able to do. But again, you're not needing to have their password to log them in. All you simply need is your staff web access enabled, be logged in as a staff member, look them up, and then you can basically help them out with, with all of those different functions. So the one that we're actually talking about, the enhancement that we made again is on this lookup course view roster instructor, op instructor options. It's a mouthful. So again, previously, once you clicked on that link, we would have been presented with the entire list of courses and then you had the option to filter them down. We've kind of changed that a little bit so that it doesn't display them right away. You do actually need to set some of the filters. So if we were to, actually let's log off of Chuck and then we will, actually let's go back one more. We don't need to be logged on as a student for this. So click this link, we're gonna select some options. So you can see we can either toggle between selecting all instructors or show for a particular instructor. So if I pull up the Jason Allen instructor and I just say, I'm not gonna put in any of the search criteria here, just say get courses, it'll pull up all of the courses that Jason Allen is teaching. And again, um, if you're not familiar with this or if you're new to Manager Web, uh, from here you can view the rosters from the rosters page, you can view course details. Now this is stuff that um, you can only see if you're logged in as a staff member to see some of this fee detail and things. So you actually get to see a bit more than if you were just a normal instructor looking at your course roster. The other things are to be able to print it out, either export that to an Excel, um, go to the attendance sheet option, 
or emailing these students. Um, and again, this can be done anywhere that you're at with a web browser. The caveat with the emailing is that it's going to use whatever your local browser is. So it's just basically a mail to link. When you click this, if you've got Outlook installed, it's going to plug all those email addresses for this particular class into the BCC field so that you can email them from wherever you're at. But it's not using ACEWEB's email system, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back to that. The other options. to my courses here. The other options, if you have the attendance tracking module, you can track attendance on courses that obviously uh, have attendance enabled. I don't have that available on this course, but if I did, you'd have the options there for enabling the, for entering in your attendance records. And then finally, gradebook access. So again, if you're allowing gradebook access for your instructors, um, or if you're logged in as a staff member and you want to modify grades, you can now access that right from here as well. So one of the new features that um, we're actually going to talk about on the next slide is that we've enabled CEUs as one of the fields that you can add to this gradebook access. So if you guys uh, use CEUs at your organization, get with your Aceware Tech, and they can get you set up to um, get CEUs added to that template. So, all right, we doing good so far. No questions. Just want to mention that the a lot of the features that the staff web access features that Jason just showed are not new features. They've been in the product for a while. Some of these instructor enhancements are new, but you can get uh, uh, if, if you're not using the staff web access and you saw some things that might be useful, you can uh, probably get that enabled with your current version for the uh, conference release. So, yep, yep, definitely get with your tech. If you, if, again, if you're new to staff web access, uh, if you're just new to Ace Web in general, and this looks like an awesome feature, get with your technician. They can make sure that it's uh, ready to go and uh, get that enabled for you. Okay, we do have a question from Emma right here in town um, regarding the uh, expiration date or the course open date in terms of when a course is opening. Uh, the question is, does that happen at like zero, zero, zero hours on the day that you put or is it at 2,400 hours on the day that you put it? I, uh, when it does that be course- midnight on the day before. I'm pretty sure. Matthew, the, you wanna? You want to it's it's jump in there. as soon as that date flips. So at 11:59 and 59 seconds, it's not showing. Right at midnight, right when that date switches to the new date, it's on. Okay, so it would be at zero hundred hours of the day you put on there, which is basically at midnight Correct. of the new day. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, very good. Uh, and I think. Uh, there was a wish list about adding, uh, and I've already got this on the list for Matthew, about adding a mass change update to the coupon expiration date. And Matthew says he'll work on that. So if that was a question, obviously I, I could see that be helpful uh, once you're implementing that. So I think that as a, Sharon, you see anything on the question? Nope. I think that's it for now. For now. All right, good, good. So moving on, we have... Oh, here we go to so our, our late night infomercial, infomercial voice. Are you tired of sifting through fake name records, <laughs> course proposals, and express registrations? You need Google reCAPTCHA. So this is, is nothing new by any stretch, but um, it is within the, some of the last few builds. So we're, we're now pleased to announce support for Google reCAPTCHA. So if you are plagued by those bots that uh, just like to spam your your ace website and create bogus records trying to deliver whatever weird payload you know whether it's a link to some site or just to, to spam you and make your life miserable get with your tech this is a bit of an involved process um, it does require some new templates and you do need to um, have basically a, some form of a google account that you can attach this recapture option to and You'll list your site, enter in some of the, the URLs and things, but we can definitely walk you through that if this is going to be helpful for you. I definitely recommend it. So, All right, 
next up, escrow on ASWEB. So this is one of the big ones. This is something that has been on the wish list, I think, since I came to ASWEB like 12 years ago. And it's one of those ones where there are just so many different variations in both how you guys use escrow or whether you use escrow, but the different situations that can be applied when you're talking about how can we allow this on ASWEB without this happening or that happening. So we have it. It's going to be behind a, a toggle setting, which gives you a couple of extra options. So the first option is ASWEB is going to function just as it does now. Escrow is, is not allowed on ASWEB, but as um, it has been for a very long time, the student can see how much their escrow balance is. We have a function that's on some of the newer templates that basically says, you know, hey, you've got X number of dollars in escrow. If you want to use this, call the office. So make sure you do still have that enabled at least. But if you have this new setting set to zero, it's not going to allow any sort of escrow paying um, by the student on ASWEB. The first option, escrow pay will be enabled if it will completely cover the cost of everything that is on the student's cart. So if their escrow balance exceeds the total balance of their cart, then they're going to see a screen that looks kind of like this. So um, on our tabs down here, we can see there's a new escrow tab, and it basically says you have X number of dollars in your escrow account. You can use it to pay for all of your current registrations or all of your current selections. And then they click that pay from escrow button, and it uh, wraps things up, deducts the amount from their escrow balance, or rather applies those escrow payments to their current registrations, and then you know, sends them on to the confirmation process. Going back, the second option, escrow pay can be used also when it doesn't cover the entire amount of all of the courses on the card. So they can partially use escrow to pay for a course. Now, the, the big thing to remember here is for option two, if it's not going to pay for their entire cart, then they will be prompted to use the credit card payment, or basically just whatever your payment gateway is at that time, to pay for the remaining balance of the registrations. If that payment fails or is declined or doesn't go through or we don't hear back from the payment gateway, aka an AW pending, then that actual remaining balance is going to be converted into a billing record so that the student can either go back into their registration history, pay for it online, or you can send them out a bill. The important thing is, is that the registration will be active. We are assuming that because they're using their escrow for this course or these courses, that they do intend on going to them and paying for them. So that's kind of why we're, we're allowing that to stay as a, an actual full registration. So keep that in mind. If you are using that option too, um, it could require a little bit of follow-up on your part. Make sure you're either running your, um, you know, your, your invoices or that you've got someone scanning for AW pending records things like that, just to make sure that you've got all of your bases covered. So, so what do they see for this option too? So this is an example of where it says, okay, you've got 250 in your escrow account. You can apply it towards the current amount owed. And you have an option there to check that box, which also says, I'm going to pay for the rest by credit cards. So they check that box. That's going to apply that 250. And then they need to pay for the remaining 47 with whatever payment gateway you've got uh, currently set up. And so again, just, just be aware that if something happens to that um, payment or that payment process, then the registrations are still going to exist and you will need to follow up with that. Now, there was one situation that was kind of brought up when we were thinking about this, which is, okay, what if they've got $15 in escrow and they put seven courses on their, their cart and the escrow isn't even going to pay for the entire first registration. Well, what, what's going to happen is uh, what, what will happen when there's an AW pending or the payment fails, I should, I should clarify. So what will happen is that the situation that we just talked about will occur. So they'll have the registration in that first class on their cart, and they will be billed, or there'll be a billing record created for the remaining amount and then all of the other courses are going to uh, be handled with whatever your current void pending payments and fail option settings are for, for your payment gateways. So if 
you've got your void pending payments set to do all the cleanup and stuff, then those are simply going to be, you know, taken care of, cleaned up, either voided and deleted uh, so that the person can come back later on ACEweb and try and re-enroll on those. But it's not going to put all six of those courses um, as valid registrations. It's just for the one course that was partially paid for using some of that escrow. So um, that was one of those situations that we kind of had to think about. And we're like, okay, here's here's a solution that's going to work. So now I'm guessing there's probably going to be lots of questions on this or that you guys are going to have questions later. So um, if there's any now, we can, we can try and answer them. Otherwise, shoot them to your technician and uh, we can get those answered for you. Next up is going to be a couple things that Stein is going to go over. So I'm just going to be showing the screens here and Stein. Okay. Uh, just one other comment on the escrow payment is that there will be an option uh, called an escrow cutoff that uh, if you, uh, if people's escrow accounts expire after a certain time, say for a year, you can put the number of days, you can put 365 into that cutoff uh, uh, setting, and then any escrow payments they have that are over uh, 365 days old will not show up in that uh, in those dialogues as being uh, able to be used uh, online. So there will be that option. You can, if your escrow payments are good forever, then you just leave it set to zero and it will never be applied. But uh, just one other thing uh, <clears throat> that uh, uh, one other bit of flexibility you have with that, that escrow feature. Okay, instructor profiles. This is also something that we've had requests in for uh, uh, years. Let's be uh, frank here. It's been around for a while, and we're just now getting around to being uh, getting it done, and hopefully we'll get it into this uh, uh conference build. Um, if not, it may come out. Uh, it's actually sort of a standalone feature that may come out a bit later. But uh, the idea that uh, your instructors can actually edit their own uh, profile information. Uh, so right now, anything that you want to, you know, we have uh, a fairly extensive list of fields that you can fill in for your instructors but they're all things they have to send it to you and then your staff has to type in this is a way to let them enter that information in or update it as things change they change their address or phone number or something so and basically it will be similar to our uh, student profile page that we have on aceweb uh, <clears throat> but uh, it will be available to instructors. They will log in using the same uh, credentials that they use to get into the current course roster gradebook instructor feature. Uh, but this will be uh, uh, <clears throat> give them access to this different information. And it's pretty straightforward at this point, just your standard stuff. Uh, but uh, it does give them, uh, it is an option that, that may save your staff some time and uh, let uh, the instructors keep their own information up. Uh, so uh, again, it's something that uh, is currently under construction, but we're going to try to get it out here um, sometime this summer, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. So, and then we've got a couple of things on the Quick Pick page. Again, if this is not something you know about. This is an add-on module that uh, <clears throat> you'd have to uh, see about purchasing. Uh, but the Quick Pick page uh, is a alternate way to get through the registration process where we display, uh, and it's especially useful, uh, people who are running OLLI programs and other uh, <clears throat> offerings where people sign up for a lot of different courses at one time. Uh, the Quick Pick allows you to give a whole uh, page full of course options with check boxes by them. Rather than having to list the course, say, enroll me in this course, 
and then say, add another course, go back through the list, find the next course. You get all the courses at once, and then you just pick the customer, uh, the user, end user just picks uh, what the courses they want. Uh, a couple of the new features here are the ability to limit the number of courses in a different uh, group. We do allow you on Quick Pick to group your courses into different categories. Uh, you can have all your, um, uh, uh, say you have uh, uh, history courses or art courses or whatever, you can uh, pop them up there in, in different areas. And if you want to limit uh, how many courses in a given area a given customer can take, you can now do that. And uh, you'll see here in art and music, we're limiting by the number of course hours. Now, if you're gonna do this, then you have to, of course, attach hours to those courses. Uh, and in this uh, uh, case, we're gonna let them take 60 course hours from that section. Uh, in the crafting section, they're limited by the number total number of courses they can take. And if they try to pick more than what's allowed, you'll get a pop-up. If you hit uh, uh, in the course section, uh, you hit two courses and you try to hit number three, it'll tell you in no uncertain terms, you can't pick anymore. And it'll disable, actually disable the, uh, um, checkboxes by those courses. And with the um, course hours, uh, it'll also give you, you know, the total you've already picked. And this does, uh, is a, a, a backwards looking feature. So if they enrolled in uh, one course last week, and then they come back in the section that only allows two, they pick their first course for today is going to add in the one they took last week and stop their registration at that because now they've hit their two maximum. Again, with the hours, if they've enrolled in courses or registered for courses, even if they haven't already taken them, if they're in their uh, upcoming courses list, they'll uh, total those hours into that uh, uh, total and uh, apply the limit. And then another thing that we've been asked for in Quick Pick initially, Quick Pick uh, did not allow for optional or ad additional fees. It allowed only for uh, the base course fee. Uh, there were some options that, depending, say, on your membership level, there were different uh, base course fee levels uh, that would uh, usually be pre selected for the user. But in terms of adding optional fees, like you know, adding that uh, 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 calculator. Let's see, the calculator you need for beginning crochet. I guess uh, you might need that. So uh, if you uh, if you want that, you have the option of. Um, I believe that was. Uh, let's look at the next uh, link here. Yeah, that was a, a mandatory fee. That was set as a mandatory fee on the crochet class. So when they select the crochet class, the calculator uh, fee will come up already checked and they won't have the option to uncheck it because we said that's a mandatory uh, <coughs> requirement for that class. With the other uh, option there, uh, you can see that the book and the parking pass are optional, and so the user can then uh, select them if they, if you know, it's something they want or need, uh, and uh, they can select it. And then if they later, before they actually register, want to come back, they will have the option to say, "Oh well, I don't really need the parking pass, so I'm going to unselect it." Uh, so uh, again, this is with the latest version of Quick Pick, which is actually out now. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it will, uh, does require a, a recent release. Uh, I believe we have version 059 out now, which will work with these new quick pick features. Or if you wanna wait for the uh, uh, conference release, which will be 060, uh, that will of course support all this, uh, all these new quick pick features as well.
So awesome. I think that's what I have. Thank you, Stein. Um, Sharon, Chuck, seeing any questions that we can address before we move on to the last little bit here? I actually have a couple for quick pick. Number one, uh, right. Christy asks, will the escrow feature work in quick pick? Not at this point, but that is something we can uh, uh, look into. Uh, I mean, it hasn't been uh, uh, developed at this point. Given that it really gets applied to the final uh, amount after checkout, I would think that there aren't really going to be any particular issues. Uh, we just need to uh, make the Quick Pick checkout page support those extra uh, options uh, for the escrow feature. But uh, uh, I would think that it uh, probably is something, if we don't get it in the immediate release, it would be something we can add uh, quickly down the road. But uh, 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 the more I think about it, I the more reasonable it seems that that's probably something we can work in, yeah. All right, uh, second question from Leslie up in uh, the Northland. Um, if you have a course set for, reg if they don't, well, I guess if a client does not allow billing on registrations and you have uh, two or three registrations in the cart and you apply escrow it, and it doesn't cover enough to pay the final course, um you really we uh, well, what happens to that last course that has a partial payment um you don't uh, the question uh, my question for you guys is we don't look at the billing status on that last course right if there's any money that gets applied to the course Correct. it is right. considered a good registration right yep. in in that particular case we're overriding the allow billing uh, right setting so even if you haven't explicitly said allow billing if you agree to go with option two in the escrow then then there are cases where you may end up having a bill to collect but, okay but so the question is let me let me dig into that um what if you registered for two classes 100 bucks a piece and you only have nine uh a hundred dollars in your in your escrow and there's zero money to apply to that extra class. In that case where there is no money applied, do you ignore that or? And that second class would follow whatever rules you have set for your void pending payment system. So if you've got void pending payments set to the most aggressive level of cleanup, then that that course is simply going to uh, be voided and deleted in the database, and then they could go and attempt to re-register for that. Mm -hmm. But it would not have a registration in Student Manager that has a billing on it. Yeah. The billing would yeah, only be gotcha. created for unless, the course. That unless, has... of course, you have explicitly allowed billing for that second course. Then, right. of course, then they oh, could right, go for it. They, you know, right. Now, uh, let that. me... Let me, um, I, and again, I was answering questions while you guys were going through this, but wanted to clarify for the participants that, and I think you mentioned this, right, Jason, that if a student did not have enough escrow to pay the total bill, they will be presented with the credit card payment checkout and be asked to submit a credit card. You covered that, right? I mean, that's yeah. right. Okay. And so again, Leslie, in that case, you're really going to uh, ask people to pay for that other class um, it, that they wouldn't have the money for to completely cover it. And the only circumstance that would be odd is if the payment was declined, well, payment was declined, or it went into that AW pending purgatory. Right. So I, I I think we've got again the 99 or 95 percent of those cases covered. So yeah. um, very good. Well, I think that's all the questions we got right now. So carry on. All right. So the final thing that we want to mention, and I kind of hinted at this at the beginning, is that these are the big features that were released, but definitely not all of them. If you are not currently subscribed to our Aceware forums, where we put out what builds we're releasing, when we release them, what bugs were fixed, what features, in fact, what all of the features that were added, you should definitely subscribe to that. There's a number of ways that you can get to it. Um, let's see if we go to our website here. I can spell. 
aceware.com. You can either click under customers and go to aceware forums, or you can just go to aceware.com slash forum. Basically click the register button will be up here in the top if you're not already logged in, which I am. Uh, but you click that register button. Uh, this is for you guys only, so it does take approval from one of us. It's usually pretty quick within a few hours or maybe a day. Um, we'll get your account approved, and then you can actually subscribe to whichever forums you like. Right now, we've got two for AceWeb because we do have the uh, Fox Pro version and the SQL version. We are throwing around the idea of combining these into just one forum, but again, that would require that all of you that already are subscribed resubscribe to the new forum that we create, so we haven't exactly moved on that yet. Um, you can also get the Quick Pick Updates information here and the student manager updates. So just to kind of give you an example, um, when we're talking about what else is included, if you click on any one of these build releases, you can see we list out all of the features that were added, as well as all the bugs that were fixed. So if you want to know everything about it, um, be sure you subscribe to that form. That's also going to give you an email when we post that new build. So if you want to be on the cutting, bleeding edge of AceWeb and Student Manager, then uh, get subscribed and we'll get you an email notification as soon as those builds are released. And that is all I've got. Sharon, do you Sharon. want to take over? Very good. Very good. Good um, session. Good discussion. We appreciate that very much. Um, that ends our sessions for today, but tomorrow, here's what's online. At 1030 in the morning, registration tips and tricks. This was the session selected by you all. At 1.30, and at three, we have customer presentations. One customer from the Auburn University at Montgomery will be sharing how they use Pocket Ledger. All of you have Pocket Ledger with your system, unless you're a really, really early subscriber, but we can help you with that. And if you've been thinking about course packaging or you have course packaging, this would be a good session to attend from the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. We'll be sharing how they use course packaging in their programs. And we have, I'm going to give a shout out to Erica McLean from the University of West Georgia, who won our Amazon gift card. You'll be hearing from Susan to get your home address so we can get that emailed to you. And with that, I think we'll close it for today. Let everyone catch up on any outstanding work for the day, and we will see you in the morning. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.